I was able to use one sheet of plywood for this entire project. Um, it's wrist on white oak with the MDF core and a uh, 4x8 sheet. And uh, I'm going to get started first by uh, breaking it down into more manageable pieces. So I'm going to go to my table saw and just start making some rips. To break it down even further, I'll use my circular saw and a track that I made in shop to uh, just break it down even further. You know, smaller pieces, just easier to handle. To get to final dimension, I'll use my table saw sled. So I'll set up a stop on my fence, and that ensures that every component will be the same dimension, but also the sled helps ensure square. Um, since I'm using sheet goods, I have to hide that, that edge, uh, the MDF edge. So right here, I'm just going to rip a bunch of strips of solid white oak and then glue that to the edges of my plywood. I use uh, blue tape just to clamp everything down. It, it gives you enough pressure, you know, just a bunch of strips along the length of the component uh, is sufficient. And then after about an hour or so, um, I can take those strips off and then flush everything up. So for the, uh, for the ends, I'll use my flush trim saw. And then for the, uh, the faces, uh, I'll use my, my block plane. Um, I like the block plane. It's not as fast as a flush trim bit with a router, but I feel like I have a little bit more control. And, um, you know, honestly, I just like using my block plane. You know, any chance I get to use a plane, I'm going to take. Once you click close, though, you know, you don't want to go into the plywood uh, veneer. So uh, once I'm close, you know, take my time and uh, make sure I don't gouge that, that veneer because that would suck. All right, now we're going to get started on making the clamping calls for gluing the edge banding to the top and bottom of the sides. So the sides have a radius that I've used a compass to trace onto that MDF template and cut that out, but I need the other side of that curve. I need that negative template. So what I'm doing is just double stick taping that MDF template onto a piece of eighth inch plywood. And then I'm going to run that through a pattern bit on my uh, router table and just cut that out right there. And then that's going to give me the other side of this angle. Um, I hope that makes sense. And then from there, I'm just going to transfer that curve to a piece of three quarter MDF. Um, and then I'm going to go to my bandsaw and just cut that out, uh, stay off about a sixteenth of an inch off that line, so that then I can come back to my router table and pattern route that out. And then the last step in this process is just using the pattern bit to flush up that three quarter inch MDF to that eighth inch uh, plywood. Okay, with those made, uh, I can go ahead and use the original template and transfer that uh, radius to the actual sides of my bookshelf. Um, so I'm just going to scribe a line right there and then go to my bandsaw and uh, you know stay off about a sixteenth off that line, uh, cut that out, and then go back to my router table to uh, finish it off with the template and the pattern bit. Alright, and now the next step is just to flush it up with the template. Um, I use double stick tape a lot. 
uh, for applications like this. So if you've never used double stick tape, I highly recommend it. All right, so now you can kind of see what I was working at, um, getting uh, the negative template and the positive template together just so I can clamp the edge banding to the top and bottom of the sides uh, properly, you know, um, just to get even clamping pressure along, along both. And you can also see I'm using some blue tape to shim off the calls a bit, just to fill any discrepancies there was in the template routing to really apply even pressure. And with these uh, all clamped up, uh, we're all done with the edge banding. Uh, I'm just gonna flush it up off camera and then get started on the rabbits. I'm gonna get started on the rabbit in the back of the cabinet now. And the whole point of a rabbit is to house the back panel. Um, so we need to relief those sides so that we can put in a uh, frame and panel back. Um, the sides get a stopped rabbit. And what that means is that I'm gonna plunge the side in um, at a start and stop mark on, on my fence. So I'll plunge it in, I'll run the groove, and I'll stop uh, at the mark that I've made. When that's done, I'm ready to make the grooves for the shelves and the top and bottom. So I'm using spline joinery. Uh, so all I really need to do is cut quarter inch dados into the sides. So I'm doing stop dados on the top and the bottom, and then I'm doing through dados from the back for the middle two shelves. And they, they all stop about, you know, a quarter inch from the front of the case. And to be as precise as possible with these grooves so that nothing's kind of out of whack, I clamp down the sides um, so those won't move, and then I'll move the fence that my router rides along um, to the correct dimension where I want the shelves to go. I'll make sure that that fence is square to my sides so that when I go to put it together, they're not going to be out of whack, you know, by too much. <laughs> I wanted to include a sliding dovetail partition. Uh, I thought it looked pretty nice, so I just grabbed a, I don't even know what kind of dovetail router bit that is, but I had it and I used it. So I'm going to put the a uh, slotting dovetail uh, profile in the bottom shelf and then the shelf adjacent right up top. I'm a big fan of pre-finishing uh, components, so prior to glue-ups, uh, if I can pre-finish uh, the services, I will. I like my glue up stress-free, so I try to glue, you know, the minimum amount of parts together at once. So I'm just right here, I'm just going to glue the top and bottom and the sides together. I'm using F-style clamps, and if you guys don't know, uh, these clamps allow you to adjust the clamping pressure by moving the clamps in and out. And what that does is it actually racks the, the case. So if your case is out of square, you can adjust the clamping pressure in and out, and that will actually move the case um, into square and out of square. I check square with diagonal sticks. Um, I get a dimension corner to corner and then set that, go to the other corner to corner. And if it's the same dimension, you're in square. If it's too tight or if it's, you know, there's a gap, then you're out of square. Here you can see the stopped rabbit that we'd made earlier. Um, now that the case is glued up, I can square that off. So I'm gonna hog out most of it with my trim router and then come back with my chisel to fine tune it. And uh, hey, if you're in the Chicagoland area, I would highly recommend Noon Whistle Brewery. Uh, they make some pretty good beers, and uh, I'm kind of on a Noon Whistle kick right now, so check them out. So these are the last two shelves that I'm putting in the cabinet. Um, with the whole case glued up, um, I did the, the grooves from the back um, just so that I could slide these shelves in after the whole case has been uh, assembled.
Now I'm going to put the dovetail profile in the partition. Um, since it's MDF, you know, I had my doubts if it was going to work or not, but it ended up being kind of alright. When I test fit the partition, uh, it slid pretty well into the dovetailed groove, um, but after I applied glue to it, it swelled. Um, that was kind of an oversight on my end. So um, I had to end up getting out my hammer and uh, had to drive it home. You know, it's not something I really like doing with my furniture, but um, you know, nothing broke and it ended up being okay. That pretty much wraps up the construction of this case. Uh, I have some flushing up to do and some rounding over and some sanding and then applying the finish to the outside, but um, I can continue with the project and in the next video of the series I start uh, building the legs and the back panel. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it.